I think sometimes it can be cringy whenever the beginning of every video, the guy on there is saying, hey, you guys, y'all hit subscribe, hit like, hit share. You know, this is kind of begging, you know. But, but Tony Carroll says, you guys and gals hit subscribe. We need more of this dude on YouTube. Keep it up, Caleb. Tony, I like where you're going with this. Where's my intro? All right, all right, all right. Exciting week. My boat should be ready here pretty quick. I'm put, I've been putting together a video on it, you know, step by step as it goes, and I'll be putting a video out of the boat in its entirety here before too terribly long, I hope. But today, one of my favorite things to do on this channel is to read comments from you guys. So I picked some out. I'm gonna be honest with you, this is completely ad-libbed. I don't go through them and think about, okay, how am I gonna answer this? I see something with a question mark, I screenshot it, and we deal with it right here. Uh, not really live, but you're getting a live reaction. Number one, from hman0314, how do you explain the difference in terminology between different manufacturers and rod builders? My, my understanding is there is no industry standard for a medium light, medium, medium heavy. One rod band labeled medium strength may feel the same as medium heavy in a different brand. Does this discrep discrepancy tend to make you stay with one specific rod manufacturer? It doesn't make me stay with one rod manufacturer. What it does is whenever I find a manufacturer that I like, that I like the way their rods feel as a whole, then I learn what the actions mean to that company. But yes, absolutely, across, across different brands, different manufacturers, the a medium can to be the same as a medium heavy over here or a medium light over there. So once you find that company that you like, then that's the time that maybe go visit that company or go to the store, wherever those rods are at, and learn for yourself the difference. So remember in the rod video I showed you, you know, just taking them and, and shaking them and moving them in the air doesn't really give you much as, you know, using your, your hand and, and bending the rod, flexing it. One thing that I've seen Laguna do at fishing shows is they'll take a plastic and cut a little slit in it and put it on the tip of the rod that you know gives a little bit of weight. So it's gonna it's gonna give you more of a feel for where the bend is, how bouncy it is. But yes, totally different, but does not at all affect who my manufacturer is. From Travis Salinas, what size braided line do you run and do you use backing? Love your content. Thank you, Travis. Love your comments. Hey. Um, I use 30 on everything I trout fish with. I'm gonna, I'm gonna use 30 across the board. I like 30 because it doesn't backlash as bad, and whenever it does, it's not as hard to get out. Um, it doesn't dig as much as you know, 10, 15, 20 would. It, it kind of stays on top of itself, especially after I break it in. I like line that's about that's, that's wore out. I like it whenever I, the line I put on when it's brand new is dark green. I like it whenever it's almost white. It's kind of flattened out. That, that's just where I am. That's how I like to use it. As far as red fishing, I run 50 pound on everything and I tie direct on. I never throw a leader red fishing. I've, I've had a lot of customers show up in the last couple of weeks and you know, to their credit, we've trout fished first and then we went red fishing, but they all had leaders on. A couple of them lost fish because of the leaders. I never, ever, ever, ever run a leader red fishing. Never. The only time there is a piece of mono is whenever I have it underneath a popping cork. But that's 50 pound whenever I'm red fishing, 30 whenever I'm trout fishing. Sometimes I'll run a leader, sometimes I won't. Um, as far as backing, what I do, or rather I have Mike over at English Anonymous spool all my stuff. He keeps big, big spools there. I'll take him six or eight reels at a time and have him, have him swap them out. But uh, wrap Teflon tape on around the spool. If you have the perforated spools, it helps keep water out of them but that, that braid will kind of dig into that Teflon and keep it from spinning, so you really don't need a backing, in my opinion. Ho, oh, from the Five Crucial Corky Tips video, Jason Miller, every time you pause your corky, then you pop it, how far up to the top does it jump before you pause it again? Jason, it, it, it's all about feel, and it was hard for me to answer this to you in words, so I selected to put it on here. So whenever I'm working my quirky, I throw it out. I have it bent like I showed you on the quirky video. I think I showed you on both the quirky videos. But so the quirky is sinks down to where I want it and then I'll walk it. And it is slowly getting higher about like my hand does. And then I'll stop and I'll let it fall and then I'll, I'll walk it again. Now obviously since it's, since it's climbing up, right? 
the longer you walk it, the higher it's gonna get. So if I wanna get back down that water column, I'm gonna let it fall a little bit longer. But usually I'm five, six, seven twitches and letting it fall. So it's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, and then letting it fall. And that's about where it's at. Um, if you're just you know working it real slow, you can probably keep it consistent all the way across. Or if you fish corkies long enough to really have a feel for what that lure is doing, you could work it continuously, but you're working it at a pace that you know is going to you know let it kind of keep falling as you're walking it. But if you're walking it aggressively, as I often do, then you're letting it come up and then you know let just giving it giving it back. It's something that is hard to put into words. You know my my hand quirky here it does a little bit for you, but that's an experience thing. There's some things that you know I can't just tell you do this and it's and it's going to work where you want it. It just you, it, that that comes to time on the water. Maybe fishing some clear water where you can see it and get a better understanding of what's going on. Oh, from planning your waiting trip summer edition, Will Parker. What changes between late summer to fall transition? You covered spring to summer. Let's get that fall transition. Will, I'm gonna do a tra I'm gonna do a fall transition. The thing is, is every year isn't exactly the same. Every year changes up a little bit, and that's the beauty of having a a teaching channel like I'm trying to put together here. Is I don't have to repeat myself every year. There's gonna be small nuances, small little things that are gonna change, and so we can cover that. So that being said, I'm I'm waiting for the fall to fully set in before I say, hey, you know, this is what I see happening out here this year. This is, this is what I think we need to do. So, so there's that. Um, just top of my head, you know, I covered it last week or two weeks ago on the October video. You know, you're having a small shrimp coming out of the marsh. You're having some birds, you're having all that. We, uh, some customer, customers and I caught some really good fish last week. I was driving down a shoreline and there was a drain and on Bite Me and, and on here, we always talk about the snowy egress, the little white birds, black feet, black leg, yellow feet, and they are just stacked up on a drain. Now, the reason I bring this up is they weren't stacked up on the drain out, in, out on the edge of the bay. They were maybe 50 yards back up on the drain, just sitting on the edges, but that told me there's bait all in that drain. The tide's coming out. I can see the water rolling out. We stopped, we fished it and you know did really well i had one i had three customers getting ready and one that's already ready he cast it out out of the boat maybe 30 feet from the boat and as soon as this quirky hit the water bam so that's what i can give you now but i want i want the information i give you guys to be accurate and timely so once the fall really kicks in then we're going to hit it oh the old how to work a paul brown quirky edward walt waltman 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 have had some issues with the fat boy spinning. Is that because of its alignment or could I have the back bent down too far? Still working to figure this out. Happen to have one here. All right, look, it's probably, it, it could be the alignment or the back bent too far. So again, bend the nose down, get a nice little healthy bend in that nose right there. And then, whoo, y'all finally got to see me get hooked. Then, you know, just start about right there. You know, nothing crazy, make sure it's in line it shouldn't spin. Now, a lot of the times whenever you're reeling it back in, it gets close to you and you're burning it in, it's gonna spin, it's gonna do it. But whether it's spinning or not out there, that's where you need to be concerned about. You know, maybe take some bend out of the tail, make sure it's straight in line, should be good to go. Caleb Huff, please do a rod and reel review. There's not much about Laguna rods on YouTube. It's no secret I'm with Laguna. I've been with them eight or nine years now. Love them, great rods, I love their customs, I fish their liquids. On this channel, I'm trying not to be too biased. Of course, I want to promote my sponsors. That's part of my job, but I'm trying not to be, you know, too biased. Sarges are great. Waterloo's are great. You know, Falcon, whatever you're happy with, I'm happy that you're happy with it. I will be doing Laguna Rod videos, but those are going to be on the Laguna Rod webpage. So when that comes out, I'll share it. I'll let y'all know. But again, uh, you know, with the lures. I promote stuff that I'm not even sponsored by. Um, I'm trying to keep this channel, you know, for everybody, not 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 one of those buy my stuff channels. But thank you, Caleb. Oh, and speaking of, my number's on the on, on my webpage. So if you want to call me and ask me directly about the actions I like, feel free. My phone my phone's there. Uh, if I don't answer, text me. I'm probably on the water. I will get back with you. J G Sloat. J G Sloat. I'm gonna go with JG Slope. And they're talking about the uh, video where I brought up some hemostats. They are not hemostats. 
They are needle they are needle holders. I'm a veterinary surgeon. We all we all have dogs. Ask your doc for to get a pair. I use the one with the small scissors of the joint. They cut braid well. Gold handles are best, probably about $75. Cheaper than a boga and they are stainless. I agree it is the most critical tool to release a healthy fish. You guys went nuts on that video and I learned something that I didn't know. These are not hemostats. They are also not in focus. They're not hemostats though. They're needle holders. I found this pair on Amazon for 15 bucks. I'm very happy with them. Um, if I can find the link, I'll put it down in the script description. These are Cynamed, C-Y-N-A Med. Um, they have the, the, little, the little short jaws like I like. Come on, baby. They have little short jaws. I don't like the, okay, I give up. I don't like the, the scissor ones. It's it just something in my head. I don't like sticking them down there with my braid. Maybe I don't notice that I clip it a little bit. Um, but needle holders, you guys went crazy on this. I learned something from you. Thank you so much. I ordered like five pairs. These are my favorite one. I've got a whole pile of them sitting over there now. Joey Andrews is using a Tony clip okay. I tied straight to 15 pound Berkeley trialing for fat boys, soft eyes, and so on. Joey, a lot of people use them. I don't, I don't like them. I, I don't like Tony clips. I don't like quick swirls. I don't like snap swivels. I don't like any of it. It's one more piece of hardware to fail. It, 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 maybe it matters, maybe it doesn't. You're getting into my weird OCD trout side. I mean, my, my redfish side is like, hey, try to make it work. Trout side, I'm OCD. I like every little thing in order. Um, it adds weight to the lure. It, I don't use them. I'm sure it's okay. I know people that do use them. I've lost fish on them, on the Tony clips, the quick swirls. I've had the fish rolling and pop it right off. So I don't use it personally. A lot of people do. Completely up to you, Joey. M. Lando. Cold Texas weather is coming, bro. The Corky is not my confidence lure. Would love to see a fishing video with you and your buddies using them. You always show great on-water footage of what you're seeing. Thanks for the content. Thank you, Lando. Um, Captain Pat Gardner and I have some serious plans to go catch some trout, some big trout on Corky's this winter. Um, it's just, it's not quite the time yet that Pat and I have time to get together. We're both in our busy seasons. I think I have three days off total in November. Those are the days the wife wants me to come home, clean up that enchilada plate we talked about. But Pat and I, we have it, we have it. It is on the agenda. It is going to happen. Uh, Texas Ant, Tamek 04, which I'm assuming is Texas A&M Corpus Christi 04, hometown hero right there. Do you bend the floaters the same way as sinkers? And thanks for another awesome video. The floaters, I'll still, I'll still bend them kind of like this. I may leave the tail a little bit straighter. The nose is still going to get bent down. Um, I'm not trying to get those floaters to dig as much, so I may not bend the tail as much. The nose is still getting it though. Moving on, Kenneth Setzer. I had Kenneth on the boat a week or two ago. Great guy. Really enjoyed having him. Love the video, Caleb. Quirky season is upon us. Haha. Ha. Hey, I don't like the word quirky season because there's not a quirky season. You use it all the time. How long do you fish an area before you decide to move? Do you go on a long way to cross areas you think they may be, or are they or are they there and just not hungry and maybe and you move? Completely up to you in the time right there. If you've got good watercolor, good movement, um, some bait flipping. I'm not leaving. I've, I've told this story before. I sat in one spot for six hours without a single bite. Got my first, I was there at 7 a.m., got my first bite at 1 p.m. From 1 until dark, I think we had eight or 10 fish over 28, one going up to like 32. But everything looked right. It kept me there. I knew that it was going to be a short winter bite window, and I just grinded it out until it happened. Um, if there's no bait, no anything that makes me feel like it's there, then I might walk off and, you know, go meander around. And we'll cover that on a, on a video later on. Dave Howe, what are your thoughts on the broken back lures that Steve offers? So he's talking about the broken back fat boys. I like them. Um, I, the fat boy is my confidence bait. I, that, that's what I stick with. I like it. I know every little nuance about that bait, what I can make it do. I have used the broken backs with great success when the water was really, really cold. Because the broken back, you can almost just kind of reel it real slow and it's going to do its own thing. You know, maybe a little pop here and there, but it's going to kind of do its own thing. So when the water's real cold and I want that bait to just kind of climb and crawl through there like an old cold bait fish would, then that's where I really use that lure. Nothing wrong with them. Good colors. I like Steve. Great guy. Um, it's just not what I grew up with. It's, it's not what I use all the time, but the broken backs can be good. 
Y'all hear that door rattling? I have my wife locked out so she can't come and talk to me while I'm trying to do this because I need to get it knocked out so I can get back to Matagorda. Okay, uh, Jay Battistein. Battistein, I think. Maybe do a video on how to take care of your boat after a day on the bay. What's necessary, what's over here. Just, just as overkill, what's a, just a suggestion I'd appreciate. I, all I do on my boat after a day of fishing, because I'm usually going the next day, is I pressure wash it, you know, get the big chunks knocked off. Um, I'm, I ha I'm bringing out a video on what I do to really clean up my boat when it's going to go in the barn for a little bit. Uh, if you guys follow me on Facebook, you would know that yesterday I accidentally mixed bleach with muriatic acid. It will clean the heck out of a boat. It'll also fog out a barn, run the dogs out of the backyard, and kill your sense of smell for 24 to 36 hours. I hope. Still can't smell anything. Eyes a little bit itchy. Tony Strickland, question for Captain. How often does Google Earth update? With all the hurricanes we have experienced, the cuts will have changed at the area I plan on fishing in November. I'm still seeing the same vehicle parked near the beach house I have rented. It doesn't, it's not that up to date. My dad and I spent six hours on a sandbar that happened after Harvey that I would, on a, a path that I'd ran three, four hundred times minimum. They change, it definitely changes after a big flood. So proceed with caution, sir. Gotta let my wife in in a minute. All right, so keep, keep it up with the comments. You guys are absolutely killing it. I, like I said, I read every one of them. I screenshot them, I put them into a folder. I have plenty more questions to answer. I try to find stuff that's a little bit, you know, with the season. That's why I went with a lot of the quirky videos and stuff like that. But thank you so much. Thank you. Uh, the channel's growing crazy. Can't believe it. Uh, when we hit 5,000 subscribers, I've got some, some cool stuff we're going to do. So go out there, find some birds, find some nice water, throw your fat boys, keep liking, keep commenting, and we will catch you on the next one.